All right. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Hey, microphone's not working, but we are going to go live in two, guys. We play Where's Diddy. You've heard of where, Where's Waldo? We play Where's Diddy this morning, guys. Is he under a tree? Is he in the Bahamas? Is he in the Caribbean? Is he still in the U.S.? We're going to look into it, guys. We're going to have a great time. We do Today in History. We're going to do Awake and Bake. We do all the morning news, guys. If you want to get down, nothing says waking up like a little daily dank in your cup, guys. Good morning, good morning. We go live in two. Where's Diddy? Is he in a tree? Where's Diddy? Is he under me? Where's Diddy? We're going to find out right after this, guys. Good morning, guys. How's everyone doing? It is 10 a.m., guys. And this is the 710 a.m. Super Show. Wakey, wakey. Boop. Time for bakey, guys. That's right. How's everyone doing out there this morning? It is. What is today? Thursday, guys. It is True Crime Thursday. Literally, we are going to be talking all sorts of stuff, but we are talking Diddy. The Diddy guys doing the Diddy, doing the Diddy. Big shout out to everyone over on X. Nice, nice. We got some people watching over there, guys. Uh, we can't see your comments, but we know you're watching. We appreciate you guys. Everyone over here on the Daily Dank on the YouTube, appreciate you guys. So, yeah, let's get right into it, guys. Diddy. Our, not our buddy, um, Diddy 
is in a whole heap of trouble this morning and every day. Yeah, where's Diddy in trouble? Yeah, <laughs> where's Diddy? Oh, good morning, good morning, bad boy for life. Good morning, Rosie Key. Good morning, Supernova. How you doing? How you doing? Chris Zucchini, good morning. Teresa Deller, good morning. There's everybody. They're starting to trickle in, trickle in this morning. Yeah, guys, we'll get right into it. Diddy. Diddy, uh, he had his homes, um, had his home uh, 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 searched, two of them, both of them. They were raided by uh, the FBI. They were raided by um, uh, Homeland. You name it, they were there. Uh, they did the East Coast and the West Coast at the same time um, and uh, raided it on a, uh, what is it? Um, on uh, sex trafficking, of all things, um, you know, and it just uh, earlier, uh, I don't know, earlier in the year, late last year, uh, he had settled. Um, he had settled a lawsuit in like an hour, like a, a woman that these kind of accusations were made. So they went ahead and then they uh, raided his place, guys. Um, and uh, he, uh, the word on the street is his jet, he bailed, man. He's gone. He's uh, in the Caribbean. He's going to work it out, <laughs> work it out via the phone. He's going to do a Zoom. And, uh, yeah, so those are, uh, that's what's going on right now, guys. His plane landed in the Caribbean. Uh, don't know if he's on it or not. Like I'm saying, we're playing where's, where's Diddy? Is he up in a tree? Where's Diddy? Is he standing under me? Where's Diddy? That's right, guys. We're playing where's Diddy? There he is. He's in the shirt. He's in the striped shirt. Oh, no, that's, that's the mother-in-law. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, man, it could be over for Sean Diddy Combs and seemingly uh, he's been seemingly bulletproof in his billion dollar empire. That is true, guys. I mean, you, th you look at every other uh, your uh, people who are in that West Coast, East Coast uh, rap uh, battle. Um, he seemed kind of untouchable there for a little while. Right. Hey, good morning, honey. Not hero. We good morning. The feds destroyed higher profile people's hidden tapes first. Yet yeah, that is true. All those hidden, you know, that's uh, one of the most logical things about Epstein was that he probably was an like some kind of, uh, I wouldn't say for us, Israel, like a CIA Israel guy. That was always the, the thing I had heard, uh, but you know, I'm not like an insider or nothing. Um, <laughs> word on the street. Um, no, but I mean, so they do stuff like that, but. He's been untouchable uh, in his billion dollar empire. Um, he has uh, he has a very questionable past that's been able to control because of his power for a long time. Um, Derek Parker, who was a detective in the New York uh, uh, PD's Rap Intelligent Unit, who knew they had a Rap Intelligent Unit, uh, aka Hip Hop Cops. <laughs> that's a 90s fucking name if i ever heard it hey guys we're the hip-hop cops i wonder if they actually tried like the rap too my name is officer goodwill and i'm here to say i love fighting crime in a major way <laughs> all right aka hip-hop cops told the post uh, but it looks like uh, looks to me like someone is behind this someone who really wants to destroy his brand and take him down uh, Parker was referring to Homeland Security agents swarming Combs's home in Los Angeles and Miami. The cross-country uh, invasion was reportedly related to sex trafficking allegations. Uh, the law enforcement um, said, you want to get in here, Rosie? There you go. Um, meanwhile, a day's look in Combs, 54, was seen at the Miami Opa um, Executive Airport Monday afternoon after his private jet was stopped by feds on the tarmac, apparently bound for a Caribbean spring break with some of his seven kids. Around the same time, the entrepreneur, he has seven kids? Wow. Um, entrepreneur's alleged drug mule 
Brendan Paul was arrested on suspicion of cocaine and marijuana possession in Miami. It all happened one day to the month since uh, Rodney Little Rod Jones, former producer and videographer for Diddy, filed an explosive lawsuit claiming the music mogul repeatedly sexually assaulted him. Oh, it was a guy. I didn't know that. It was uh, that uh, repeatedly sexually assaulted him from 2002 to 2023, September to November. Um, Jones uh, accused Combs of groping his genitals, grooming him to have sex. Diddy's attorney previously told Page Six that Little Rod is nothing more than a liar who filed the $30 million lawsuit shamelessly looking for an undeserved payday, which they paid in like 12 minutes. You know, <laughs> after the news of the raid broke, old videos and interviews resurfaced showing Usher, who was only 13 when he was sent to Diddy's uh, flavor camp. This is getting very suspect all of a sudden. We got rapping, what is it? Co rapper cops. We got cops of hip hop. We got P. Diddy's flavor camp. Puffy's flavor camp at the person at, um, in Scarsdale. Um, Usher, now 45, told Howard Stern in 2016 he had a very curious thing take place at the camp that he would never send a child of his somewhere like that. Oh, wow. It was pretty wild. It was crazy. There were curious things taking place. I didn't necessarily understand it. In 2004, in an interview with Rolling Stone, Usher recalled how Diddy uh, introduced him to a totally different set of, sh of shit sex. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. That's what it says, guys. Parker, who is now a private investigator, told the Post that feds may uh, have an informant in 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 Diddy in 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 Diddy's circle, um, I didn't want well, come on in to say indeed. Like he's looking for someone to work for him, guys. Someone's giving them sensitive information. Someone's cooperating, um, said the former detective of the two of Diddy's uh, more infamous cases in New York in the '90s. Who knows the rapper well? It looks to me like the tip of the iceberg. Both California and Florida raids were led by Homeland Security invest investigator of human trafficking task force yeah so they had the whole thing out there man um god and how many times are we pretty like not we but like they're protecting these fucking guys man um horrible horrible guys uh parker said uh diddy's downfall was all but assured once he settled the bombshell lawsuit alleging rape and physical abuse yeah man that, that's what i'm saying at this point like you uh you feed the you feed the frenzy People are going to come out from everywhere now. If they have any kind of connection with you, they're going to be looking for that payday um, if you're guilty or not. And I don't know, man. But, uh, yeah, so they stopped him at the tarmac. Um, didn't say if they let him go or not. Uh, you did so now this picture, guys, is going to be a whole different picture real quick. Let me show you. Um, that way we at least have some production value going on here yeah crazy crazy times man i mean people yeah sex man <laughs> what like, it's just sex man well i get all yeah look at that young usher man crazy crazy and then i don't know if you guys have seen uh quiet on the set if we haven't talked about that, um, this is a whole nother, uh, this is the Nickelodeon kids and uh, how they were taken advantage of and the weirdness of uh, that. I would recommend it. Pretty good, uh, pretty good watch, guys. But yeah, so where's Diddy? Is he under a tree? Where's Diddy? Is he standing next to me? Where's Diddy? <laughs> we don't know. We're looking for him, guys. Is he in the Caribbean? We don't know. Old Diddy. <laughs> all right we'll have more on that news as it comes in guys as it comes in um let's see what else is happening in the news today uh yeah where's diddy <laughs> i'm not the only one with that title guys where's diddy well we but i'm the only one with the where's waldo thumbnail remember that um on uh, um yeah, so uh, we just covered that. The lottery, guys, the Powerball. Did anyone win the Powerball? 
That's what we need to find out. That's the big one. Um, they did have a winning one million mega mega millions ticket sold in uh, Southern California, guys. Um, one lucky Southern California in the state is the newest lottery uh, millionaire after uh, the numbers for the uh, 1.13 billion dollar mega million jackpot were drawn. The winning numbers um, were the winning numbers. You guys want to look it up? I'm not going to say one SoCal ticket. Um, was sold winning. However, the ticket was not the grand prize winner. The prize was claimed by a New Jersey resident who was able to match all six numbers. One fucking person. $1.13 billion. Woo! Uh, Tuesday's night's grand prize winner will have a big decision to make to take uh, the annuity or cash payout. If he takes the cash payout, it's going to be around $537 million. Man, that's more than half. The government took the government took seventy percent of my winnings, and all I got was this stupid shirt. You should have, should at least have that, man. That's a huge um, for the latter. Um, so let's see. The uh, annuity option is the the dollar amount you most frequently see advertised when it comes to Mega Millions. For the former, it's currently one point two billion, and for the latter, it's eight point six five million. If you uh, select the payout method, you'll receive a one-time payout followed by 29 payments that increase by 5% each time until they reach the amount you won. So if you do win and you take it, so you get the one big payment. I don't know, for that kind of money, if they're like, well, okay, we're going to give you $300 million. And then pay you the rest, and you actually get a few more. I could live off of three hundred million for a while. What about you, Teresa Deller? Could you live off of three hundred million while they make you a million dollar payments every week? I think I think we'd be pretty good on that. Well, congratulations to the New Jersey man or woman who uh, won. Um, man, life changing. Life changing. You don't. Well, you can't win if you don't play, guys. Um, <laughs> that's uh, that's my problem. Hmm, at my age, I could. <laughs> uh, Teresa Deller, what would be the first thing you would buy? You got three hundred million dollars, uh, even just a hundred million. What would be the first thing you would buy? Interesting. All of you guys. All of you guys. Chris Zucchini. What would you buy? Um, Rosie Key. What would you buy? Let me know, guys. What would be you got a, uh, you got that big old freaking um, hundred million burning a hole in your pocket. What do you guys buy? Stuff for your kids, stuff for yourself. First thing you walk, you go. All right, we're going to Circle K. Hundred grand bars on everybody. Kit Kats on everybody. <laughs> Oh, is that you go? All right. Also, speaking of billionaires, guys, also in the news, the baseball player from the Dodgers. Um, oh, what's his name? Shoot. Um. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> the 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 pitcher, uh, the billion dollar player. Um. No, I can't. Uh, uh, Lonnie, where's Lonnie when we need him? Um, anyway, he uh, came out. He's involved in this scandal um, with uh, his interpreter stealing money from him. Apparently, uh, there was gambling going on, a lot of gambling, um, a lot of debts being paid via wire transfers. They got turned on to him. Atani, there you go. Supernova Mike, thank you. Yeah, Atani. Hey, there's Lonnie. Um um, yeah, Atani. So there's a lot of speculation that Atani was gambling, and it wasn't so much this interpreter, and this interpreter uh, took the fall for Atani. So, you know, 700, I think it was an $800 million contract on the line that he just saw uh, signed. He came out and he was very forceful. He was like, no, I did not bet at all. It was this guy who stole money from me. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's, it's sketchy. And poor Pete Rose. Pete Rose is one interpreter away from being in the Hall of Fame, guys. <laughs> poor uh, poor Pete Rose. No, uh, man, yeah, what a scandal. Well, I mean, what do you do with $300 million? You know, or, I mean, that kind of money. I guess, I mean, I guess you uh, you gamble, right? 
Um, all right, what else is happening in the world, guys? In California, a tiny fish hinders California's water conservation plan. Um, Southern California Imperial Irrigation District, which supplies water to farmers who grew most of the na uh, nation's winter vegetables, plan to start uh, a conservation program in April to scale back what it draws from the critical Colorado River. Definitely a good thing. Definitely a good thing. But uh, but a tiny, tough fish got in the way. Now, those plants won't start until at least June, so water and wildlife officials can devise a way to ensure the endangered desert pupfish and other species are protected jamie asbury the irrigation district general manager said the proposal to pay farmers to temporarily stop water feeding uh, crops such as alfalfa this summer uh, has environmentalists concern that irrigation drains could dry up threatening the fish uh, measures the length of an atm card uh, drains are created for farmers to uh, be able to convoy irrigation runoff and the pupfish decided it was a good place to live uh, protecting the desert pupfish listed as an endangered since 1986 has been one of many, uh, many vexing problems facing the Colorado River and the species and people that rely on it. So uh, they're trying to do this because uh, if I won a billion dollars, I'd give the usual suspects a million dollars each. Nice, nice. The ultra light flying machine, Rosie Key. I thought that said Michelob Ultra for a minute. So I'm buying Michelob Ultra for everybody. Woo! <laughs> Oh, man. Yes, I like these ideas. I like it, guys. I like it. Um, so, yeah, man, uh, you know, uh, with uh, we, we did get some rain this year, so that's a good thing. But, yeah, we got to figure out the pup fish, the pup fish stopping us from uh, getting our living our best water life, guys. <laughs> uh, what else we got cooking? Um, let's see, we covered the major stuff, Diddy. Uh, what's going on, Rosie? Good morning. Rosie the Bulldog says good morning, everybody. She's just waking up. Uh, man killed after bomb threat evacuation at OC Bank. A uh, suspect was killed after a bomb threat prompted an evacuation of a Fullerton bank Tuesday night. Fullerton police responded to reports of a bank robbery. Um, the male suspect, believed to be in his 70s, had entered the bank and demanded money from the teller. Police uh, said he reportedly told the teller that he had a bomb showing that appeared to contain an explosive device. He then threatened to detonate the device. Authorities said at the time the bank was still open and there were employees and had a customer inside. They were immediately evacuated as officers and bomb squad members um, and SWAT team personnel swarmed the swapping, the, the swapping, the shopping plaza. Uh, witnesses in the video captured a hectic moment where people are running from the building. The suspect eventually exited the front uh, entrance while holding the box and other items in his hand. That was uh, when he was fatally shot by the officers. A witness who saw the encounter plays out, uh, recalls feelings of uh, being scared for her safety. Um, Police had their guns drawn, at the, and the door to the bank was open. The suspect came out, recalled Jessica Cern, a witness. They said, drop. He didn't listen. They shot him. One shot, that was it. Hey, and if you got something like a bomb coming out, like, they, you know, they don't even know. They don't even know. Have I told you guys um, I'll buy a huge building and allow everyone in our community to grow their own plants? That's a great idea, Teresa Deller. That's a great idea. Love you, BB. No ditty. <laughs> oh, man. Um, have I ever told you guys, this was a long time ago. Um, God, 20 years ago? Holy crap, about 20 years ago. Um, I uh, lived here in Needles. I've lived here that long. There was a present. This was probably like in February. 
there was a Christmas present that someone put across the street from my house. I live on a kind of a busy intersection, so it wasn't like they're putting it at my house, but they put this present. It was pretty big too, um, wrapped and they stuck it right on the four corners of where like the city is and where I'm at. Like we have a four way cross and they stuck it on the stop sign. And uh, somebody called, and it was a big deal. Um, they made me evacuate my house. And I always remember um, I was watching. I was into this reality show. I want to say it was called Average Joe. Yeah, I think I want to say Average Joe. It was a show like it was uh, like The Bachelor it had the, the a beautiful woman, but it was all nerds and guys who uh, weren't up to snuff. Um, you know, that you wouldn't normally see on those type of shows. Biden for her attention, and then they bring in the studs after a certain. That's what they call them, not me. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I was invested in the show. I was like, man, an Average Joe needs the win. Come on, and. Um, it was season finale, and they pulled me out of my house, and they uh, made me leave because of uh, that. Because of that, and uh, I remember having to go over to my grandma's and missing uh, the season finale. And it wasn't like uh, it was pre DVR; it was pre internet, pretty much. Um, you couldn't stream anything. So you just have to wait. You have to wait until it showed again. Oh, that was the worst. What kind of money are I'll just buy pounds of it? Nice, nice. Ooh, all right, guys. That was your what's waking, what's shaking, what's baking news, guys. Let's get into this. Um, ooh, we got a, we got a, we've been getting uh, more Twitch people lately. We got some people. Is that Lonnie? Are you on Twitch, Lonnie? All right, guys, we got one on Twitch. <laughs> Big shout out to the Twitch person watching. All right, guys, let's get in the roll call this morning. Here we go. That's right. Gangsters assemble, never fade away. Thank you, Barbosa Band. All right, guys. We give shout outs every day. If you want to get a shout out, all you got to do is blow up the comments. Hey, Brian, you're a rat face fink or anything. You can say, remember that word, fink, when that was a big word? Oh, you dirty fink. <laughs> How old am I? Holy shit. I remember there was a guy, uh, there was a family, the finks, uh, in town when I grew up. Their dad did window tinning. Um, yeah, it was uh, a brother and a guy, a guy, a guy my age, a kid my age. Um, good family in town. Cub Scouts. We did the whole thing together. Anyway, the Finks. <laughs> uh, big shout out. Good morning, the sweet Rosie Key. Good morning. I'm just rambling on about nonsense. Uh, good morning, Rosie Key. Let's watch Brian and his Alzheimer's on live on the air. <laughs> Oh, there's a family named the Finks. Let me tell you. Oh, the sweet Rosie Key. How you doing? The sweet and wonderful Rosie Key. We got Supernova Mike, bad boy for life. That's right. <laughs> uh, good morning, Supernova Mike. Man, we got to have another smoke session, uh, Mike, next time you're in town, man. Uh, where did he? Is he in trouble? Uh, <laughs> Chris Zucchini, good morning. The diamond smoking Chris Zucchini. Teresa Deller, the always up for the challenge, Teresa Deller. We got Honey Nut Heroin, the sweet, the beautiful, the fierce Honey Nut Heroin. We, who else we got in here? Hey, Tammy. Tammy, how you doing? Good to see you in here. Nice, nice, nice. Coward on the run. Yeah, kick that guy in the balls, man. Bring him. It's going to be interesting how this all unfolds with Diddy. Um, so we'll, we'll get into this in a minute after we do. Uh, there was some conspiracy theories already that the bridge 
was a distraction from the Diddy situation. Not my theory, a theory. All right, what else we got, guys, going on out here? Oh, we got Chris O'Kitty. We got Teresa Dellar, Supernova. Make sure I get everyone up in here this morning. Looks like it. It looks like it had to reboot the phone. I'm back now. Brian's broken bong. You're not a rat face, Fink. More like a cute bunny, Fink. <laughs> I'll be in town soon. Almost out of weed. John Phantom. How's it going, John Phantom? If anyone knows where Diddy is, it's John Phantom. John, yeah, he's down in my cellar. <laughs> Oh, uh, challenge everyone to walk 15 minutes a day. That's a mile. What if we walk a little slower than you, Teresa Deller? That may not be quite a mile. <laughs> Where's Diddy? All right. So those are those are the, you okay there, Rosie? Those are the shout outs, guys. Oh, Rosie wants her butt scratched. Don't we all? Don't we all want our butt scratched, Rosie? Come to town uh, today. Need some weed. Lonnie, yeah, get in here, Lonnie. Um, are, what are you doing, Lonnie? Are you smoking? Or are you uh, just doing edibles? Anyway, um, having a conversation on here. All right, guys. <laughs> oh, man. Let's get into today's top 10 list, guys. Um, we do uh, top 10 every morning, every every afternoon, too. If you guys haven't checked it out, um, um, if you guys have not checked it out, sorry, guys, my uh, headphones. Bear with me one quick second. Sorry, guys. Headphones are dying. Um, we do uh, top 10. If you haven't checked out our 420 show, guys, check out our 420 show. We have a blast. We uh, count down to 420 every day. We go live. Um, and uh, we count down to the greatest time of all time. 420, guys. Uh, let's see here. All right, top 10 disguises. <laughs> top 10 disguises P. Diddy can wear to avoid getting caught by the FBI. <laughs> nice, I love it. All right. <laughs> oh that is great that is great all right guys we're gonna get into this uh right now <laughs> oh the things we get into on this show guys i entertain myself i definitely uh entertain myself all right guys let's get into this top 10 excuse me as i entertain myself um Let's get into this top 10 this morning, guys. This is brought to you by the Healing Center, 1400 Needles Highway, Needles, California. Let's do the thing. All right, guys, the top 10 disguises. P. Diddy's going to wear to avoid getting caught. Number 10, dressing up as an FBI agent himself. Because who wouldn't suspect, who would suspect the suspect to be the one leading the investigation? <laughs> you got to think like Diddy, guys. You got to think like Diddy. Number 9, donning a disguise as a tour guide at a wax museum, leading the FBI agents on a wild goose chase through a celebrity maze of wax figures. <laughs> it sounds like a Scooby-Doo episode. Diddy running through that. <laughs> All right. Number 8. Dressing up as a street performer, complete with guitar and hat for tips, because who would suspect 
a busker, a busker to be P. Diddy. <laughs> Number seven, disguise P. Diddy's going to wear to keep him from getting arrested by the FBI. Disguising himself as a mine, silently sneaking past the FBI agents and ex with exaggerating gestures and invisible walls. Has anyone seen this Diddy guy? No, but there's this mime. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number six, wearing a disguise uh, as a bespackled librarian, bleeding in among the shelves of self help books and avoiding suspicion, blending in among the shelves. Old Diddy is the librarian. <laughs> Number five, donning a disguise as a fortune teller at a carnival, offering to read the FBI agent's future with the, with the side vague predictions and misdirection. Oh, I see you finding Diddy in the in the wall, in the mirror maze. Ooh. <laughs> All right, number four, dressing up as a delivery person with a pizza box labeled not P. Diddy inside because sometimes the best disguise is in plain sight. <laughs> Number three, a disguise as a a disguise as a contestant on America's Got Talent, showcasing his hidden talent for break dancing. <laughs> Oh, oh man. Number two, a full body leprechaun suit because nobody suspects a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow to be P. Diddy. <laughs> and the number one disguise, P. Diddy, is going to wear to avoid the FBI a giant inflatable croak bottle uh, costume because blending in with his favorite drink is always a good idea. All right, guys, those were your top 10 ways. Um, what happens when you forget to plug in your headphones? I do it all the time. My PS controller damn thing dies in the middle of the game. Same thing. I have to plug it in. Um, those were your top 10, guys. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What up, Barney? How you doing, buddy? I got another Australian in here. Great. We love it, guys. What are you smoking? Some Kush cookies. Nice, nice. I'm still uh, working on this uh, Fuego. Frank the Fuego man, this uh, Kush creatures, guys. I'm loving this. The good, good stuff. Um, all right, let's get into a little something I like to call today in history, guys. That's right. If we don't know the past, we're doomed to repeat it. Um, we look back. We do birthdays. We do featured events, guys. What happened today? We're going to find out today in history. Brought to you by the Healing Center, 1400 Needles Highway, Needles, California. Your number one cannabis superstore, guys. Let's do it. Day in history, a journey through time where legends are born and secrets intertwine. Join us at 7 10 a.m. for all to see as we unravel the histories from our history. All right, guys, we teased a major birthday yesterday. All I want for my birthday is you. That's right, guys, Mariah Carey. Happy birthday to Mariah Carey today, guys. Um, I don't know how old she is. It's not polite to talk about a lady's age, so we won't do that, guys. We won't do that. Mariah Carey, um, <laughs> appreciate that, man. Appreciate that, Barney. You literally need your own TV channel. We're working on it one day, one day. Appreciate you, Barney. You rock, man. You rock. All right, today in history, guys, today, Mariah Carey um, was born in 1970. I'm older than me. Who would have saw that coming? All right. Also today, guys, Quentin Tarantino, American director. Um, oh, man, Pulp Fiction. Um, 
Reservoir Dogs, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, great director, Quentin Tarantino. Happy birthday. Um, also, we got Julia Alvarez, Dominican-American author and educator, was born on this day. Um, Mariano Rayo, Prime Minister of Spain, was born today. Louis, I believe Louis, Louis King of France, Louis um, would have been up there in 1793. He was one of, like... Louis the 27th or some nonsense <laughs> was born on today, guys. Ludville Mills Van D. Rowe, American architect, was born on today, guys. Uh, who else we got? James Collin, Baron Collin, Prime Minister of England. Uh, Sarah Vaughn, American singer and painist. Uh, who else we got? Carl uh, Pearson was born. Carl Pearson was a British mathematician. Uh, Edward Sturch, American photographer, and Cirrus Vance. Uh, what did Cirrus Vance do? It was our favorite American statesman. What the hell is a statesman? Is that like our version of royalty? What's going on? So those are the birthdays today, guys. Those are the big birthdays. Tarantino is definitely one of the greats. Oh, man, for sure. Great movies. Great movies. Uh, did you say Four Children? Uh, for yeah, <laughs> you've never seen that. Yeah, the side did say children for sale on that. Oh man, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Lottie. <laughs> All right, in 47 BCE, Cleopatra was uh reinstated as queen of Egypt, the legendary Cleopatra. Aided by her Roman lover Julius Caesar, was reinstated. Um, as the ruler, uh, co-ruler of Egypt with her brother, um, this day in 47, following a civil war with her brother. Wow. Crazy. We got to look into that. I don't know. I don't know much about that. Uh, Julius Caesar and, uh, and Cleopatra. I would like to learn more about that. Anyway, guys, 2020, um, North uh, Macedonia. Where are you from, fool? From Macedonia. Return of the Mac. Return of the Mac. Macedonia became the 30th country to join, join NATO. 2002, American comedian Burrow, who was a popular entertainer in the early days of television, um, being known as Mr. Television, died at the age of 93. This was in 2002. And uh, I know this is off topic, guys, but rumor in Hollywood. Milton Burrow had the had a hog the size of your arm. Those are just I'm just saying that's the rumor, guys. Milton Burrow, a hogsmith, if there was ever one. 1998, the drug Viagra from the pharmaceutical company Pfizer was approved by the U.S. Food uh, Administration. Speaking of uh, hogs. <laughs> Speaking of hogs, uh, for its use in treating uh, erectile dysfunction. Uh, boy, that thing took off like wildfire. Uh, 1977, two planes, a Pam Am 747 and a KL uh, 747 collided on a runway in uh, Canary Islands, killing 582 people. Wow. 1975, construction began on the tri-state um Transatlantic uh, Alaska pipeline spanning 800 miles. The oil pipeline cost $8 billion. It was completed in 1977. Uh, 1964, uh, South Central Alaska. Where are you from, fool? South Central Alaska was struck by a 9.2 uh, magnitude earthquake. That was the strongest quake ever to be registered in the United States. Damn, 9.2. That ain't no joke. Uh, 1963, American director and screenwriter Quentin Tarantino, whose films included Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, are noted for their uh, stylized violence, razor-sharp dialogue, and fascination with film and pop culture, was born. Happy birthday, Tarantino. 1958, guys, uh, Nikita Koloff, no, Nikita Koroshva replaced Bolganin as prime minister of the uh, Soviet Union. 1927, um, Mr. La Rachefra, one of the best known cellists of the 20th century and music director um, in Washington, D.C., was born in Azerbaijan. 
1915 American uh, domestic Mary Mullen, better known as Typhoid Mary, was placed under quarantine on the north border of the island in New York City that lasted until her death in 1938. Um, a typhoid carrier, she was allegedly responsible for multiple outbreaks of the typhoid fever. Remember when that name popped up so much during COVID, Typh Typhoid Mary. Wow. 1886, German-American architect Ludwig uh, Mills uh, Rowe, whose uh, rectilinear forms of crafted and elegant simplicity of the international style of architecture was born. Wow. At the Battle of the Horseshoe Bend in Alabama in Creek War, uh, in Creek War, uh, Andrew Jackson and his 3,000 troops defeated the Creek Indians, slaughtering more than 800 warriors and imprisoning 500 women and children. That's not good. That's not good at all. Oh, man. You out of here, uh, Teresa Deller. You have a great day. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Uh, let's see what else. Upon the death of James Charles I, ascended to the throne of Great Britain and Ireland. Um, oh, upon the death of James I, Charles I ascended the throne. In 1351, as a part of the struggle of... Uh, between Charles of Ballas, the King of France, and John of Montfort, backed by the King of England, um, over secession of the Duchy of Brittany, um, their knights waged battle of war near Palamar. 1351. Yeah, that, that happened today, guys. That happened. America separating families for more than 200 years. Uh, ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth, Lonnie? All right, so that was your Today in History, guys. Nice, nice, nice. All right. What else are we going to get into today, guys? What's shaking? What's quaking? What's happening out there in the world? Um, wrestling. Any wrestling fans out there? Man, Road to WrestleMania heating up. Got a couple weeks for WrestleMania. Um, I'm liking it, man. Uh, you know, uh, I, I hadn't, I don't watch a ton of wrestling. I, I follow it, keep up to date on it, but man, things are getting good. I've been watching it, even going to it. Um, having, having a lot of fun, man. Um, with the wrestling, uh, let's see guys. Let's see. Let's see. Toy prices are starting to drop guys. Have we hit the toy boom? Is there a big, uh, outpouring of toys for collectors right now i think so you go to ross you go to anywhere people are uh, collecting toys i think it's kind of oversaturated you're gonna see a lot of drop you look at uh stores like ollie's um ollie's is a uh, all uh, texas uh missouri uh, they're like a discount store they buy in bulk and then they sell at discounted prices and certain marvel uh, co uh, uh cody got beat up yeah he did man cody bled his own blood uh, which was great um but i'm a cody fan i, I want to see him finish his story so you know what guys i'm sorry to go off if you're not a wrestling fan lonnie and the rest of the wrestling fans in here what i would like to see happen probably be a little hard to do but i would like to see second night cody looks like he's gonna get screwed bloodlines in the thing sakoa hits him with the spike oh my god roman's gonna screw him again only to have the natural Dustin Rhodes Dusty Rhodes' other son uh, Cody Rhodes' brother come through he's with AEW right now his contract expires in two months so it might not work out but could you imagine Dusty Dustin Rhodes come he's wearing a Dusty shirt and he comes in bionic elbow bionic elbow Boom. One, two, three. Cody wins. Oh, man. His bloodline outdoes the bloodline. How do you how do you not do that? I mean, oh, oh, it's all about family, right? That's how you tie it all in. So then the next night, guys, what do you do? Cody wins the title. There was uh, there's a famous saying of a Hulk Hogan. Um, he would play with his little Fu Manchu. 
And it wouldn't be like, no, that doesn't work for me, brother. That was something else. He would be, so then what? So Cody wins. Then what? So my idea, you have a Braun Strowman waiting to come back from injury. Night one, raw, Cody celebrating. Braun Strowman comes out. You go old school Hulk Hogan style, and you put Cody down. Braun Strowman does a number on Cody like you've never believed. He spends the next five weeks destroying everybody. Cody's out because he's hurt. Kids are sending him cards in the hospital. It's a whole thing. Um, Braun goes over the first match. Doesn't win the title. Just uh, maybe uh, they no contest because Cody just can't continue. And then the next pay-per-view is where you know you do maybe a three match, a three uh, month thing, and then Cody comes up. That you got to have some monster, man. I think uh, Cody has to fight monsters. You got to if you have a uh, a baby face champion. I think Cody uh, or whoever you face monsters, you pull that Hulk Hogan card and you just line them up, bring the monsters on guys. Every, uh, every three months, we got a new monster coming through. Um, that's how I, I see it kind of going down. Um, that's how I would like to see it. If I was, you make the call. That's right. You know what uh, I got into guys? I know uh, we're just kind of rambling here. Who remembers Choose your CM Punk. It's slobbering time. <laughs> Who remembers that? Uh, choose your own adventure books. Oh man, this was one of my favorite things as a kid. Um, what was it? Scholastic. They would do it in school. They would send out that little flyer, and you were able to pick what books you wanted, and um, they would deliver them to you, like in a couple of weeks or whatever. Um, I did that a couple of times, and uh, that's where I got. I found choose your own adventure books, guys. Um, and these were some awesome. This was internet video games before internet video games, guys. Um, and it's funny because choose your own adventure is actually the brand name, and they became like. Uh, um, like a Coke, you know, like um, where you would, you just call it, you know, Coke. We call it McDonald's. Um, I went to Burger King and ordered some McNuggets, and I felt like a fool. <laughs> and I felt like a fool. But yeah, choose your own adventure, guys. These were uh, these were a blast. I love these. Um, let's see. Throw up a picture if you guys don't know what I'm talking about here. Um, Where's Diddy? I got that. I'm gonna have that song stuck in my head for freaking ever now. <laughs> Where's Diddy? Is he under a tree? Where's Diddy? Is he copping a plea? Where's Diddy? <laughs> oh man, that's never gonna get old. I'm sure it will get old, but you guys know. All right, so yeah, here, uh, choose your own adventure books, guys. I kind of want to do a, a segment similar to this for us. Um, yeah, these choose your own adventure books. These were uh, great, man. These were great. Um, there we go. I really enjoyed these as a kid. So this would be like uh, you would be reading the book. I had a, a Superwoman one, Supergirl. And it would be like, does she save the kids and go here? Or does she not save the kids? And then you would jump to uh, page like 85 and the story would go on. When I, when I was a kid, my mom sent away for a book, called me the called me in the bee. It was uh, all about me, my brothers, my town, and trying to find my bee that flew away. I remember those, those custom books. I love the way Lonnie, like he basically told us the story again. It it was about me and my brothers and the city and me losing a bee. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I love those. Um, yeah, Choose Your Own Adventure is a series of children game books where in each story is written from a second uh, person point of view with the reader assuming the role of the protagonist, making choices um, that determine the main character's actions and the plot outcome. The series was based upon a concept created by Edward Packard, the original published uh, 
constant capitals and R.A. Montgomery's uh, Vermin Crossroads as a Ventures of You series. Um, Choose Your Own Adventures was published by Bantam Books and was one of the most popular uh, children's series during the 80s and the 90s, selling more than 250 million copies. Yeah, man, this was one of the things that meant a lot to me as a kid. Um, I was just thinking about this last night, these uh, Choose Your Own Adventure books. Remember, uh, you know what? They need to do something like that again with uh, all this. um, You know, you could do it really well, too, with the Kindles. Yeah. Honey Nut Heroin, what do you think about this? You know, everyone's reading books off of Kindles and tablets. You know, you don't really have the old school books anymore. Um, What if you did a Choose Your Own Adventure on a Kindle, but when you did, you got a little video clip of the Supergirl fighting the guy? And then, you know what I mean? That would be kind of cool. With that, we need to do something where kids are reading more. I noticed uh, that reading... um, you know, isn't isn't as important to kids as, as it once was. Um, you know, Ben, before video games, this was the video games. You know, where else could you be um, Batman? Could you be Star Wars? Could you be, you know, all these things? And you get to choose your own adventure. I remember flipping through, like, uh, doing all of them. Like, uh, oh, the worst is when you would die. You would like flip through and they were kind of, I wouldn't say violent for kids, but I perversely prefer physical books and my kids are bookworms. Nice. I'm glad somebody out there is that reading is so good. Um, yeah, I remember flipping through these books and uh, trying to figure out all the outcomes. You're like, oh, I died. Uh, Supergirl got killed by Mitzel Flick. <laughs> <coughs> And, uh, yeah, so I really enjoy these guys. I just kind of wanted to share that before we wrapped it up. I know uh, kind of off topic, but, uh, yeah, so choose your own adventure. Let's bring it all back together. Diddy. (laughs) What is Diddy going to do, guys? All right, I'm actually going to get out of here, guys. Uh, My nine-year-old's reading through the Percy Jackson series. It's a great series of books. Um, uh can't go wrong with Harry Potter, you know, um, like that. My uh, my daughter, actually, I had bought her um, a few years ago, the, uh, the entire set of the Harry Potter series. She really loved the movies. You know, we went to Universal. We did the whole thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, I bought her those. And she made it through about four of them, which, I mean, there's some thick books. And then the Deathly Hallows alone is a thick-ass book. Um, so, yeah, I was proud of her. Uh, definitely, uh, I need to start reading more myself. You know, I want to, the art of lore. I've been listening, I've been listening to audio books lately, um, when I drive with the, all the driving I've been doing. Um, I've been listening to a lot more audio books, which is, it, I don't know. It, it, it kind of the same kind of not. Um, I don't know if you absorb it the same as if you're reading it. Uh, so of course uh, I have a tendency to scan when I read. So sometimes, uh, I'll forget and I'll just start scanning and I'll be like, Oh man, I got to absorb. So maybe when you hear it auto audibly, you, uh, you absorb it a little more. I don't know. I don't know. Give me your thoughts and theories on that guys. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go wake and bake. I woke up, uh, Woke up and didn't wake and bake this morning yet. So I'm going to get in here. Guys, we got giveaways. We got giveaways. Doctor Strange tomorrow. Check out this. uh, Pocket watch, guys. Doctor Strange pocket watch. It's going to come with all sorts of Marvel stuff, guys. A Marvel autograph, 8x10 from one of the Avengers. Not the Avengers. Someone who hangs out with the Avengers. (laughs) You're going to get a Captain America koozie, a bear koozie. Captain America, I don't know what that was. Captain America beer koozie. Uh, you're going to get a, a keychain and a Marvel shirt, guys. So make sure you hashtag in Dr. Strange. All right, guys, I appreciate you. I'm going to get on out of here. Um, I will see you at 420, guys. True Crime Thursday. We're looking more. We're doing episode two. Of the Desert Rose Killer, guys. That's right. Mojave County Serial Killer. Back in the day. The Desert Rose Serial Killer, guys. Um, If you didn't catch the first episode, um, we dropped it last Thursday. Go check out the archives. It's a good one. It's a good one. We're starting to to get a... 
Starting to trim the fat. Starting to get trim, guys. Starting to do good. Um, editing, everything's lining up. Shows are getting a little better. I actually have time to put into them. Uh, appreciate you guys. Speaking of time, thank you for putting in the time of this show, guys. Uh, means a lot to me. Um, you guys put in more time than I do sometimes. So it means a lot. Um, thank you guys for tuning in every morning, every night. Um, words cannot say how appreciative I am of you helping me live this dream. All right, guys, take care of one another. Be kind to one another. Um, hold that door open. Listen to the old man stories. Make them feel good. You guys have a great blessed day. And the old lady, too. Um, have a great blessed day, guys. We'll see ya. Thank you for joining us on the It's 420 Somewhere podcast. Broadcasting worldwide and brought to you by thedailydank.com. Check out our merchandise and amazing content. And follow us on all our social media. Now, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. See you guys.